Guys, welcome back, my fellow machine learners. We are going to continue with our discussion on understanding parameters and hyperparameters using uh, a deep learning example. So if you recall in the previous video, I was um, explaining the difference between parameters and hyperparameters using linear regression and the parameter we looked at there was a regularization parameter, lambda. We looked at lasso and ridge regression, which is essentially to add a kind of a hyperparameter penalty to make sure, not make sure, but to try to improve the generalization error of our models. Okay, but the thing is we looked at a parameter and a hyperparameter. Okay. And now we're going to look, we can have a very brief uh, introduction to deep learning or neural networks. Okay, and then I'll show you um, the difference between a parameter and a hyperparameter when it comes to neural nets or deep learning. Okay, let's go through it. Uh, say now again, we're doing supervised learning and we have some data set. And I mean, I always draw it like this because X refers to all my input features and y refers to my output. This could be a classification or it could be a regression problem. And uh, you know, say now you're predicting house price and so all your input features could be, you know, you could have x1, x2, x3, for example, up to xp features. Okay, and could be size of the house, location or the suburb of the house, number of rooms, number of bathrooms, uh, type of roof, all kinds of inputs, and this could be house price. And we could have one, two, three, for example, down to N observations. Say there's a hundred houses that you are trying to train on, or there's a thousand houses, N equals a thousand. Okay. Anyway, we've gone through that. You can look at the previous videos on that. So, for example, say now we've only got, just to simplify this example, say now we've only got two input features. So P equals two. That's meant to be a P. And so what happens is you start off like this. Let's look at a very brief introduction to a neural network. So there's my X1 and you've got X2. And what happens is we sum them into a neuron or a unit. A unit, it's also called a neuron. Okay? And so what happens is, and let's put a weight there, weight one, weight two, and we can include a bias here. Let's call it W0. Okay. So what does a neural network do? Well, the first step is, this is a very simple one. This is a, a kind of just a you know, we're looking at a very simple building block of a neural network. The first step is it kind of performs something exactly the same as linear regression. It says, so there's a summation in here, and then there's an activation function. Okay, at first a summation, then an activation. So what do I mean by that? So if we say h of x is equal to w0 plus w1 x1 plus w2 x2. So the first step that's happening inside this neuron is it's summing up uh, linear combinations of this. So can you see that this is identical to linear regression? We have some kind of bias. This is w0. And then we are summing up the contributions of each feature. And the contr contribution is based on these parameters W1, W2, and of course, W0. These are our parameters. Okay? So remember in linear regression, we said, well, Y is equal to B0 plus B1X. And if we're using this example, it's going to look this exactly the same. Right? We have our parameters that we are trying to learn by carrying out least squares, for example. But when neural networks takes a, a second step is it then takes this h of x and it passes h of x into through an activation function g. So we pass h into g and this is known as your activation function. 
Okay. And this is non-linear. And this is the important part, is that if there was no activation function, then all we would have is a linear uh, neural network. Okay? So, let's make this a bit more complicated. And so what this activation function does is, it fires, it introduces non-linearity. It fires if it reaches a threshold or it doesn't fire. Guys, remember, this is not a video on neural networks. This is a, just a quick overview of how it works so that we can compare parameters and, and hyperparameters. So in this activation function is a nonlinear function, right? So if you have so something like this, right? If you've got some input x and this is your output Actually, it's not an input X, it would be an input H, and a G would be your output. So whatever your input is, remember, this is your input for that specific uh, neuron. That's H. So H then goes into G, and you can see if it's high, then it has a certain flattening value, a saturating value. If it's lower, then it gives you a different value. There's non-linearity. You put in the H and out comes some value, but it's not linear. Okay, I'm not going to go into how this all works. I just want to give you the idea of what's happening. So say now you've got these two, X1 and X2, and say now you've got two neurons or units, um, and X1 goes into there, X2 goes into there, each one has a weight, weight 1, weight 2, and there's also a bias there. And then X1 goes into this unit as well, okay? And X2 goes into that unit, so we can call that, say, W3 and W4, okay? Then this one can, these two can go into another unit, okay? And we can call this W5, W6, for example. And there's another hidden unit there, or a neuron, and... That can be W7 and W8, right? And then these can go out into a final result. And that could be W9, W10. Guys, I'm giving you a very basic idea of this so that we can understand the difference between parameters and hyperparameters. So what happens, uh, and then, so what happens is you feed in your inputs, okay? And you start off with all of these specific parameters, just like coefficients. And it gives you an output, it gives you a specific output based on those inputs. Remember, this is supervised learning, supervised. And then we compare that output with the actual output, right? This is a predicted output based on our neural net. And then we compute an error. And then based on that error, the neural net then carries out back propagation, okay, which is based on stochastic gradient sent, descent, and it updates these weights, these parameters, okay? And without going into all the details, it, it feeds, feeds the, the data in and it compares the error, then it updates the weights. Then it feeds the data in and it keeps going back and forth and keeps up and comparing the prediction with the actual output and it updates the weight so that this error between prediction and output is at a minimum. Okay, that is all I'm going to say for now. Okay, the point I'm trying to make is that what this network is learning are these parameters W0, W1, etc. up to W10. It's learning these parameters. But these learned parameters are based on hyperparameters. What are the hyperparameters in a neural network? Let's come back here. The hyperparameters, for example, are what? Are the number of hidden layers. Number of hidden layers. Okay? That's a hyperparameter. You could have one hidden layer. You could have 100 hidden layers, you could have 91, you could have 50. Another hyperparameter is the 
number of neurons per layer or the number of units or neurons. Okay, this could be one. We could just have this go to one neuron here or unit, or you could have five or ten, right? Um, a very, very important hyperparameter is the learning rate which is all to do with when you're carrying out your optimization, okay, your learning rate. So this also, this can vary between a minimum and a maximum value, right? These are hyperparameters. What are some other examples? Oh, type of activation function, right? These nonlinear activation functions, for example, you could have the sigmoid, sigmoid right which looks like that you could have the tan h you could have an, actually the the one that i've seen that's really the most important at the moment is the rectified linear unit that looks like this and then looks like that then you've also got something called the leaky rectified linear unit where this is got a slight slope over there okay guys this is, this is a very quick overview of neural nets. So don't expect to understand everything in here. I will hopefully in the future try to make a more thorough series of videos on neural nets. But these are all activation functions. All of these, guys, you set all of these, you set them. Then for that specific configuration, that specific configuration, for example, we choose a number of hidden layers, the number of units, the learning rate, the types of activation functions. Um, what are the other examples? There, there, are, there are quite a, a number of, of hyperparameters. Okay? Then for that specific configuration of hyperparameters, you carry out your optimization and update the weights until you find the optimal weights that carry out the prediction, okay? Then you change your configuration to a different configuration and then you learn the parameters. So you set your hyperparameters, then, you then based on those, that configuration or combination of hyperparameters, you learn your parameters and you keep changing it and changing it until you've obtained the best parameters. And again, this is carried out often through cross-validation. And in scikit-learn, you can, you can, I'll go into this in detail. You can do it two ways. You can do an exhaustive uh, cross-validation, or you can do a random, a random grid cross-validation. So what is exhaustive? Exhaustive. Exhaustive means you go through absolutely every single combination of your... So, for example, if you've got the number of hidden layers, hidden layers, okay? I want the number of hidden layers to be uh, w one, two, and three. I want us to check, um, it, you know, is, is one okay? Is two better? Is three better? Then the number of units, units. Okay, one, two, and five, for example. Or the learning rate, which is very, very important. The learning rate. Um, we give it a minimum value up until a maximum value. Right? And so, you exhaustive means you go through every single combination of this. You can imagine that this gets very big very quickly. But in my research, I found, if I'm not mistaken, a paper, I mean, I'm not mistaken of the, the research, but the, who, who wrote it, it was Bengio, Joshua Bengio, if I'm not mistaken. And they showed that even if you do a random, say now there were 10,000 different combinations here, and you just did a random 100, you could, you could get hyperparameters that are very close to the optimal um, number of or optimal hyperparameters if you do an exhaustive search. So random grid CV in scikit-learn 
is a very powerful functionality for learning this. Okay? I think that's all that I would like to say for now. So, yes, again, what do hyperparameters do? Hyperparameters control learning. They affect the parameters. Okay? And it's, so it's very important that we, for every specific uh, model, is we obtain, for that specific model, we go through the, uh, whole, 